Hi guys and welcome to a channel update. It's been a long time since I did one, but um, I thought I'd do one. I've got some recent acquisitions I'm going to share with you. I'll show you what I got. Um, talk about my latest builds and uh, talk about the body builder most in, the Bomber Command body build. Give you an update on that and also just discuss what I would be doing after that the rest of the year. All right, I'm going to start off discussing the Bomber Command body build. And uh, I've just written some stats down here. Presently, we have 82 confirmed builders within the group. 97 builds have been entered so far. People have posted uh, confirmation photos and videos of intended builds. 64 of those 97 builds have begun and 13 have been completed. The 13th one was completed today. And uh, today is Thursday, August the 23rd. Uh, this uh, buddy build ends on October 31st, so we've still got just over two months, two months and a week uh, to get builds in. So if you're just being made aware of this and you wanna join in, plenty of time to build something. Come in and have fun, there's a lot of guys great group of guys on Facebook um, all having fun in a Facebook forum so that's the update on that what am I building I have two builds I've entered into the body build so far they're not complete they've uh, been built and painted and decaled uh, as of today uh, I've got to move on to weathering one's already been gloss clear coated uh, to make ready for weathering let's see Hanley Page Halifax B3, Ravel, Germany. And then I have an old tool in 1959, original Airfix 172nd scale Vickers Wellington B3 that I'm working on. And I just put the day cows on this morning, so I'm letting them set. And then tonight before I go to bed, I'll put some gloss coat over those day cows, and then that'll be ready for weathering as well. So here's the Halifax. That's where I'm at so far. I did actually put a grey wash on the underside to highlight the panel lines there and then it leaves some nice sort of fading effect on the panels. So the undersides had a wash, there's still a lot more I'll do to the underside, you know dirt stains and stuff, splatter from the wheels and exhaust stains from the exhaust that blow out underneath the wings. So I'll do that. But great kit, really enjoyed building that. The only place I needed filler was just around the canopy and uh, this front uh, window here, the gunner's window. And that was the only place a little bit of filler was required. Apart from that, it's a great kit. And the old tooling, 1959 Vickers Wellington, there she is, day cows are on. Day cows are from 1975, so 43-year-old day cows. Um, I did put them in the sun, in the sunniest window of the house, left them there for the last two weeks since I did the introduction video to bleach them. And the dark yellow did turn to a pale yellow. And then last night I uh, sprayed on some testers day cow bond, which I just received this week. That's one of the acquisitions. Sprayed that on and then this morning with trepidation, I cut them up from the day cow sheet. Not a lot of day cows, just those two round doors and just the fuselage squadron codes, serial number and the emblem on the rudder on both sides. So 10 day cows in total. So with trepidation, I put them in water, try them out. They stayed, they slid off nicely. That was the first one I did, the starboard side wing and it bedded down lovely and that was a good sign I thought cool uh, I had some silvering on the side day cows on the few, uh, squadron code day cows so all I did was uh, when I painted that little circular portion above the roundel I used the same black paint to paint over the silvering to make the silvering disappear on both sides so that's it. The Bombay, I built the Bombay. This was solid fuselage. And I wanted to make it look better, so 
I cut that, chopped that all out, and the bomb bay on a Wellington has three uh, compartments, and then the bomb bay doors is a series of six doors, four sets of six doors, which close in different directions, and uh, so those portions I chopped out, I split down the middle, two lengths on each side, and then split them into six sections. So I've got 24 sections of Bombay doors to put on. All the peripheral parts are done on both. They're ready to go for weathering. These are all the parts on the Halifax. I've got bombs, I've got the wheel bay doors. I've got the wheel struts there with decals on there, main wheels, rear wheel. And four propellers and wheel struts there. And then here are the uh, middle turret that's painted and ready to go and so is the rear turret oh rear turret decided to do a runner and then on the Vickers Wellington there's the 24 Bombay doors on cocktail sticks all painted ready for weathering two main wheels two propellers and then we have Bombay doors, there's four of those, one, one there, two there and one somewhere else. But anyway, so all, everything's done on those two jobs, just got to do the weathering and then uh, I can do the final reveal. You might notice that the camo colours, it's a lot lighter on the Wellington compared to the Halifax. This was uh, Dark Earth, Model Masters Dark Earth, toned down with a little bit of white from the bottle. And I like the colour, but photographs I saw of the Wellington showed that the, the Dark Earth was a lot lighter. So I used just a standard flat earth um, paint from Model Masters and toned it down with some white. And that's why it looks a lot lighter. The dark green is a mix of two colours. On the Wellington it's a Vallejo German uniform colour uh, mixed with some medium green model master. And then on the Halifax it's Humbro Ferda mixed with the medium green by model master and toned down with white. Always experimenting with colours. All right, acquisitions. So, these bombers, I we've still got two months and a week left of the Bomber Command Buddy Build, so I want to do a diorama, whether that's for the Halifax or the, um, the Vickers Wellington, I'm not sure yet, or I could do, have both of the models together in one larger um, dio. But, for a dio, I decided to buy the World War II RAF Bomber Resupply Set. It's got some great stuff in there. I'll do an in-box introduction. Got a utility vehicles and um, got a maintenance tower, tractor, trolleys for the bombs. Got some oil cans, ladders, uh, bombs, chocks and uh, We've got an oil fuel tank, sorry, there, and we've got some small bomb container crates there, and a push bike. So I'm looking forward to that because I've never built anything other than aircraft, so this is going to be different for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. What I'm disappointed by is it doesn't come with figures. I was hoping there'd be some ground crew so I could post some ground crew working on the aircraft, loading bombs, etc. So I'm looking now for a good RAF 172nd ground crew kit. I've seen one um, on Amazon and uh, I just have to press the order button now. So that's one the first acquisition. And second acquisition, Hawker Sea Oricon. I don't have a hurricane now. After four and a half years, I've always wanted a hurricane and never built one because I was looking for one in 132nd scale and just couldn't find a decent kit. But 
Airfix brought this Sea Oricon out, nice new tool in. Uh, they also bought the Mark 1 or 2 new tool in out. And uh, they didn't have that one available, so I got the Sea Oricon. So finally I've got an Oricon to put into my build collection. Again, I'll do an inbox introduction for that. I also got the new tooled 148 Bolton Paul Defiant. Turret gunner. So uh, I'm looking forward to that one as well. These Airfix, new Airfix kits are really nice. They go, in, they go together great. The only, the only uh, contention I have is the panel lines seem to be a lot wider and deeper than on the Japanese kits. All right, and for the bomber command, apart from that um, dio I'm talking about doing, if I've got time, I might include another aircraft. And who doesn't love a mozzie? So I got a Mosquito here. This kit was kindly sent to me a few years ago by um, Freddy Duarte. Uh, so thanks, Freddy. And uh, it comes with three different options. There's two British versions and then there's the Royal Canadian Air Force version. So um, that might be an entry into the Bomber Command Body Build, my third aircraft entry. All right, acquisitions, topping up with stores. I needed some more grey Steinol Res Primer, so I bought that. There's a Tester's Decal Bonder that I used for the first time last night. Works a treat, really recommend it for old decals. Bleach them in the sun and then they're brush, uh, airbrushed. You just spray out a rattle can onto your decals. Running low on uh, acrylic thinners, so I bought some. I always use Tester's Model Masters stuff. And I was low on semi-gloss model master clear coat so bought another one of those and blades I was down to my last couple of blades so I got some number 11s and a pack of those and a pack of number 10 curved blades always need those I also bought a couple of Tamiya brushes um, Weasel Air brushes uh, this one is a, is this the medium point? It doesn't say it's all in Japanese, so I can't tell you. I, yeah, it is, that's the medium point, pointed brush. These are a more expensive brush, but I'm hoping they're gonna be good quality so I can uh, do some real fine detail, especially on faces of figures. Uh, and that's the uh, fine one. I've got a fine one and a medium one. And it's very fine, a nice stiff point. And it's supposed to retain that stiff point and uh, not splay apart. So I can't wait to try those. Also topped up on paints and as you can see, all different shades of green. I bought a lot of shades of green and a lot of shades of brown. And uh, painted them down on here to see the different color tones and it was from there that I could choose what colours I wanted to use for my camo. So what I got in this box, there's three, four Tamiya. It's a deep green XF26, black green XF27, a dark green XF70, uh, which is the same as the uh, Dark green too for the Imperial Japanese Navy. Here is a Khaki XF49, I'd run out of that. And then on the Model Masters, I got a Dark Earth, that's the one I used on the Wellington. Toned down with some white. And uh, here is an RAF Dark Green, I also got. That's six paints, and then I have more in here, another six paints again shades of green and brown this is oh sorry that's the flat earth i used not the dark earth the dark earth i used on the wellington oh, on the halifax sorry and the flat earth as you can see it's lighter i use that on the wellington both toned down with white uh, is a dark green 
another shade of dark green from Model Masters. This is a signal green from Model Masters. And then there's three shades of brown. This one is called Gulf Armor Sand. This one is called Tan, it's a light colour. And then I also got a dark tan. So that was a light tan, this is a dark tan. So 12 paints there, paint brushes, blades, all this stuff you get at the stores. I also got some um, parts for dioramas and I'll show those in a minute. Okay, so uh, other things I bought was for dioramas. It was some styrene product because I want to finish off the little museum dio I was building. I uh, want to be able to put uh, some girders in, roof girders and uh, a roof, walls, etc. So I bought some sheet styrene. I started using this to create the bomb bay on the Wellington. Um, I got some 40 foul thick plain white styrene. There's a few sheets in there. Um, and I got some 20 foul plain white styrene. I also got some clear styrene and I don't have that in the box. I got a pack of clear styrene so I can do windows. Back and then this is some uh, 60 foul square rod. And in this pack we have five pieces of quarter inch styrene column. The H column, there you can see the end there. This is angle beam, and these are long. These are, I'm guessing, about 18 inch long. It doesn't say the length, but this is quarter inch angle. However, you can see there. This is 20 foul thick, quarter inch wide styrene strips. I've got some 30 foul rod, 10 pieces. So I can use that for doing tubes or like cabling on large scale aircraft. And I've got some 100 foul rod here Five pieces And then I have some I-beams And these are quarter inch I-beams Five pieces and they're about 18 inch long However you can see the I-beams So nice parts for building structures with and generally having some fun building dioramas. Alright then, now there's another group build going on, it's being hosted by Ian Poulton. It's called the Great War Group Build, ends on November 11th and um, if I've got time after I've done my bit for my build, I may be entering a build for that. And if I do get the time, this is a kit I'm thinking of building. I bought this kit when Airfix were having a sale a year or two ago, and there were like 40% discounts off everything. And I bought a bunch of kits. This is the Anley Page 0400, First World War bomber. It's quite a large aircraft at 172 scale and a ton of rigging on it 
which excites me. I, I like that kind of challenge. So if I've got time, Ian, I might enter this. I'll confirm it though closer to the time for me to build it. I'll do an introduction, obviously, showing date and time and post it into the group build uh, group on Facebook. And uh, you know, it'll also a YouTube video on my channel. So fingers crossed, guys, I'll get time and I'll be able to post that one. Just sticking with the theme of bombers. I'm enjoying doing bombers, British bombers. So I thought, why not do a First World War one as well while we're at it? And so if I'm building dioramas for these bomber aircraft with the RAF Bomber Command resupply set, I'm going to need bases. And uh, fortunately, my dearly beloved Ruth, um, when she was out shopping, She's always thinking about me when she's out shopping and will grab things now and then for me and surprise me. She was shopping at Job Lots. It's, um, it's a statewide store um, that sells lots of different things, including uh, artwork stuff, anything from gardening to artwork. And uh, she saw a frame that was being sold off cheap, just getting rid of it for two ninety nine. And here it is, nice frame, two ninety nine. It's a big frame. That inside is sixteen by twenty two, sixteen by twenty. The inside frame, and then the outside is a you know, four inches bigger, so twenty inches by. About another six inches on that, about 20 by 26. So a nice base area there to put a bomber on and resupply set. So I'm, I'm good for a base. And not only that, she bought some other things um, which were going really cheap. Artist canvas panels. These are 12 by 16s and you can see that fits in the middle of there. And these these are only $6.50 for three panels. You see there's three panels there. I just bought two packs. Two three packs. So I've got six bases there for putting dioramas on. So I thought that was nice of her. I said thank you and uh, so I'm all set now guys for doing diorama base. And more to come with these six bases and that one as well i'm all set guys that's my channel update hope everyone's having fun with the models thanks to everyone that's entered the bomber command body build so far 82 of you out there and i'm sure we'll have more joining we've still got over two months to go so that's it guys thanks for watching if you've stuck with it this long 20 minutes 22 minutes uh, much appreciated and until my next update on either the Halifax or the Wellington, I bid you adieu. Talio, chocks away.